Hi everyone, how's it going? James here with you uh, for uh, another vinyl update. Listening to uh, Dennis Brown, Money in My Pocket, the best of. Uh, I mentioned this on Facebook the other day, there's a track on here, track two, um, Love Has Found Its Way. It's one of those songs, when I hear it, I have to cue it up again and again. Uh, I can listen to it up to half a dozen times in a row. Uh, and not get sick of it. So this morning I had to force myself to not skip it in order to get further into the CD. Great compilation, double album, um, the great Dennis Brown. I think Bob Marley called him the greatest reggae singer of all time. So there you go. Um, right, so uh, yeah, a Vinyl Finds video for you. I have actually recorded another video which I'm going to put up in a couple of days so uh, your, you, uh, your feeds might be getting a little bit clogged with me at the moment so just to kind of explain uh, and contextualise that I'm actually going to take August off I've decided I've been doing a, a, quite a few videos recently and uh, I'm starting to get a bit kind of you know zonked with it all I'm going to go away for a couple of holidays and so on um, you know take some time away so what I'm trying to do I'm trying to kind of tidy up some loose ends the main loose end I need to tidy up, and I'm not going to be able to do it, is um, VCLT. Just want to give a quick shout out to some people. Martin Parrott, John Bellamy, uh, Andy, Cloudy Milder, Paul, Dr. Roberts, John, Six Inch Pianist. All these people have sent me wonderful VCLT, and I just haven't got round to getting my act together. So when I come back after the summer, uh, one of the first videos I make, if not the first actually, will be a kind of you know VCLT catch up. So thanks to all those people. I've been enjoying all the music that you've sent and, uh, and I will catch up with that. But what I thought I'd try and do before I kind of disappear for a few weeks is just show you a few more vinyl finds that I've made. Tr just trying to tidy up some loose ends. I'm going to show you the remains of the huge uh, Oxfam uh, hall that I've been showing in kind of you know various stages. I'm going to show you the last few things from that. I'm going to show you a couple of brand new records and some of the things I picked up, and that should hopefully help me to kind of you know close a chapter. Here it comes. Just a great track. Okay two David Bowie reissues to get us started with. The first one I have John Bellamy to thank for this. He alerted me to it. It was going really cheap actually on, I think it was Amazon. It was only, it was only about, I don't know what it was, it was about 12 pounds or something. So I kind of jumped on it. Not an album that I've actually ever owned. I've not owned it ever on CD or vinyl. Space Oddity, uh, Unwashed and Somewhat Slightly Dazed, Letter to Hermione. Signet Committee. Bowie. Great album. Um, not my favourite album of his, obviously it's you know very early, uh, but you can hear uh, a lot of the ideas that he was going to continue with over the years and kind of nascent perform. Uh, but certainly I couldn't leave it online there for that price, so I picked it up. Da -da -da -da. Um, and this one, uh, I didn't have this on vinyl, it was the last one that I needed to get of his classic run. This is the latest 45th anniversary reissue, limited edition gold vinyl. There we go. So yeah, doesn't need much introduction from me, Ziggy and the spiders from Mars. To me, the cover looks uh, looks kind of darker than versions that I've seen before. What do you think? I've not taken the shrink off yet. Oh yeah, the shrink as well. If you've not checked out Brian's video, Shamrock, I'll put a link down below. He did a, an amazing demonstration of how to get the shrink off a record. Um, I won't steal his thunder. I'll let him explain it if you haven't watched it. Go and watch it. Here's the link. Um, I tried it and it worked like a dream. Thanks, Brian. David Bowie, the Spiders from Mars, 45th anniversary edition. Unbelievable. Right, okay, so what have we got? Okay, let's do the final few uh, Oxfam purchases. One of Sparks's greatest albums, uh, Indiscreet, in beautiful condition. 
beautiful. It's like a peach, freshly grown on a tree. On the Orange Island label. I just love this album. I, I much prefer it to um, Kimono in My House. I find Kimono in My House quite sort of difficult. Uh, the production, I find it a bit, I don't know, maybe it's the pressing I've got. But this record is one of their most sort of, I don't know, beautifully arranged. <laughs> I mean, it's completely ridiculous, you know, lyrically, all the songs. Hospitality on Parade, Happy Hunting Ground, Pineapple. Um, just a, a sublime work of surreal genius, really. But I was very pleased to pick it up for a very good price. I think it was under five pounds. Uh, so uh, that was great fun to find. Sparks. Indiscreet. Uh, this one, kind of a blind buy, but I do pick up Tangerine Dream as and when I can, which is very rarely, you know, very rarely see their records. Soundtrack to the film um, Sorcerer. This is pretty good. It, it wasn't consistently excellent. Uh, side one was great. Side two got a little bit... <sighs> With Tangerine Dream, I love them to an extent, but I can't listen to a lot of them, you know, I can't listen to, I get a bit maxed out after a while, uh, and Tangerine Dream have that effect on me for some reason. I do like their music, even love their music, um, but I sometimes, by sort of halfway through side two, I, I sometimes get a bit restless and I'm ready for something else, so I had that experience with that, but I always get that with Tangerine Dream anyway. Nice condition and kind of a blind buy. I didn't know anything about that soundtrack, uh, but it's what you would expect really, you know, dreamy, tangerine dream-esque music. Um, I was pleased to pick this up because I have a fair few of his kind of more famous, well-known albums. This is Ry Cuda and Borderline. His albums used to be a lot more common in the wild uh, that, uh, than they are now. He's one of these artists who, you know, a few years ago you could pick up his records from Oxfam or whatever for like £2.50 or something, and then gradually you started to notice them disappearing, and now they're actually quite hard to come by. Uh, so I was pleased to pick this one up. I haven't actually listened to this yet, uh, but I know it's one of his uh, more well-respected albums. I see it's got Jim Keltner on drums there, John Hyatt, guitar vocals. So, yeah, I was pleased to pick that up again for a really good price and in fairly immaculate condition. Uh, a couple of Eltons, it's been kind of on my wants list for a while. It's in pretty good nick, but the corner there is kind of very slightly bent, if you can kind of see that. But generally speaking, it's in, it's in good shape. Um, and I also picked up, for a really amazing price, £2.99, I picked up this one, and it just, it, it, it contains all, all the gubbins. I know Chris from, from Vixieland Farm did a good video on Elton John a while back and he showed all the various things that you get, you know, with all the various albums. It's kind of mind-blowing in a way, you know, it comes with a booklet, you know. You just get so much in these records. I mean, these these albums are what vinyl records are all about, really, you know. I mean, just the, the sheer amount of, of kind of, you know, bump that you get. And, in the old classic Elton John albums is just something to behold, really. I find something very, I don't know, very reassuring and comforting about 1970s Elton John. I think it just takes me back to my childhood, basically, you know. And the albums are always so sort of adventurously arranged and produced, you can kind of lose yourself in them, really. I love that cover. I love the picture of Bernie Taupin. Elton. Again, great price. Um, okay, now then, there's a shop here in Lancaster, and it's amazing because for years I've been walking past it without even thinking. Now, perhaps I should go and check in there and see if they have records. It's a kind of, um, it's like a vintage shop. It mainly sells books, really. It sells a few musical instruments. It's a bit of a weird old place. I was just walking past it the other day and I saw I saw a box in the window that had some records. I thought, oh, okay. And I went in and I actually found some quite good stuff. But it's one of these shops where, you know, the guy who runs the shop clearly knows nothing about the vinyl market and he's sort of a bit of an opportunist because his stock 
it's not priced up according to condition, you know, everything's just marked up reasonably randomly, you know, some records are there for £4, some worth £2, but you know, the, the £4 ones are in worse condition than some of the £2 ones. And when I went up to him and I said to him, you know, some of these records are not in the best condition, and he said something like, oh yeah, well, you know, nowadays, you know, young people who buy records, they don't even buy them to play them, they just buy them to have them, you know, to look cool, or to put, you know, to put them on the wall, you know. And, I said to him, well, yeah, but I mean, that, you know, that's not me. Um, I hate that. I hate this, this kind of assumption that we're all kind of mugs, you know. Anyway, there was kind of a bit of a rant. He did have some quite good records in there. So um, I picked out the ones that were in good, good-ish condition. This one, I was quite happy to find. This is a band from Liverpool. They're called uh, Deaf School, and I'm going to do a video on them at some point. They came up in the 1970s, and they were a sort of alternative, weird cabaret band. I looked them up online, and apparently they're seen as being very, very significant to kind of the history of alternative British music in the 1970s. There was one quote somewhere that said something like, you know, the history of Liverpool has, you know, it's produced two. Uh, massively significant bands, one being the Beatles and one being Deaf School. Um, and I had seen a clip of them on YouTube a long time ago and they're very kind of off the wall. They remind me a little bit of Sparks actually. I think they only made maybe three studio albums uh, and a live album. And I've checked, I've checked them out on Amazon, and they're not expensive. They're not hard to come by. So I'm going to give it a couple more spins to make absolutely sure that they're going to be worth my while. You know, as in, am I going to spin this a lot of times? But I suspect, I suspect I am, and that it's going to be a keeper. Let me know in the comments below if you know anything about this bunch. But this is Deaf School and um, Second Honeymoon. I think it might actually be their debut album. An interesting thing to find in a strange little vintage bookshop that you didn't know sold records. And also in there, I was really delighted to find another uh, album by Laurie Anderson. About maybe two or three vinyl updates ago, I showed an album of hers that I bought. I then sent one to Headley. We both agreed that she was worth checking out and we should get more of her records. And then I found this one. Uh, this is um, Strange Angels, and is it's a more straightforward record than some of her other stuff. Some of her other stuff is, is quite kind of um, spoken word, stream of consciousness, very sort of electronic and, uh, you know, whatever. But this one is more kind of straight songs. Um, Shannon D, uh, hi Shannon, I, I know you mentioned in a previous video that you checked out some of Laurie's work and you know didn't like it and it might be worth you listening to this one if you haven't already because like I said it, it's more in the vein of just normal well not, not normal it's kind of left of field but it's definitely pop rock songs rather than kind of strange audio collages with a woman intoning uh, you know through a vocoder uh, but yeah a nice album and I was pleased to pick it up for a good price I think it was two pounds uh, and then this one I was really delighted to find, because I never see their albums in the wild, this is uh, The Water Boys. Uh, this is The Sea. Uh, it's the album that contains their big hits, uh, The Hole of the Moon. Classic staple on the jukeboxes, you know, back in the junior common rooms, back in the late 80s, early 90s. Mike Scott's a bit of a genius, really. I don't see a lot of stuff by him in the VC. But the Water Boys, I'd say, are quite a culturally significant band, you know. I mean, they, they came out of that thing, was it the, the big music scene? It was kind of the kind of Simple Minds U2 sort of era, mid 80s, uh, late 80s, where everything got quite sort of boomy and stadium y. But I think the Water Boys were a sort of more interesting band than either Simple Minds or U2. I mean, a bit like you two, they had a kind of spiritual dimension, you know, in their music, that kind of yearning quality. I think Mike Scott is a bit of a mystic at heart, you know. Great album, really, really good. Uh, I was so pleased to find this. Um, uh, and... 
One interesting link with this, the drummer on this album, he was in the Water Boys for a while, Kevin Wilkinson, he went on to be uh, in Squeeze. He played with Squeeze on the Ridiculous album and tour, and then very sadly he went on to hang himself, unfortunately, which is a tragic story. But also, the, the, uh, the band also featured this guy here, Carl Wallinger, who people will know, he's the guy behind uh, World Party, the band World Party. Very inventive, sort of Beatles-y, Dylan-y, Prince-y kind of 80s, early 90s band. He actually left the Water Boys, I think, uh, to form a World Party. Great find that. I was really pleased uh, to pick it up. Uh, I think it was five pounds, that one, but it's in great shape. There's Mike Scott. Now, in the previous video where I showed the Laurie Anderson, I also showed an album by a band called Sector 21, who was uh, the band that Tom Robinson went on to form after he had disbanded this band, the Tom Robinson band. And I said in that video I was going to be checking out some more uh, music by him, and then I found this one in the vintage shop. Now this collects together tracks. It says the idea of this record is to round up all the old TRB material that never made it onto an LP while the band was still together and put out a budget rest of the best collection. EMI let me go through their vault to Abbey Road where I found 10 tracks that went on either of our UK albums plus alternative versions of two of the songs that were. Now this, this album actually contains their big hit 2468 Motorway which is a really great kind of uh, punk new wave track from the mid 1970s. It also contains a song called, called Bully For You which is written by Peter Gabriel and produced by Todd Rundgren. It contains a really good uh, track called Never Gonna Fall In Love Again which apparently Elton John wrote the music for. Tom wrote the words, Elton wrote the music and it, it's a kind of um, pastiche disco track. Very good value. Uh, there's a good cover version of I Shall Be Released by the band, done in a very kind of, I'd say, you know, rough and ready style. Uh, and now side two contains, I think it's an EP which was released uh, by the band back in the day, Glad To Be Gay. Don't take no for an answer. Winter of 79, Martin, right on sister, and I'm all right, Jack. Glad to be gay, actually, is one of the most sort of culturally significant anthems that came from that era. Tom uh, is gay. He was part of the kind of um, musical movement that coalesced in the 1970s, the kind of anti-fascist kind of movement uh, that came up in the uh, in the UK. You know, people like Billy Bragg, very kind of left-wing, um, right-on kind of you know singer-songwriters. Uh, really good songs, excellent band, uh, and I still need to pick up. I think they only made two albums in their lifetime, the Tom Robinson band, so I need to pick up the the two albums that they actually released, this one being a kind of uh, off-cuts kind of collection. Right, so nearly at the end, nearly at the end. So, um, on my way home from uh, a meal with a friend, I met him for some lunch, and I had to get home, I had 10 minutes, and I thought I'll just pop into one of the hospice shops in town, I think it was Bernardo's, I literally had about 5 minutes, so I thought well let's just go and see what they've got, and ended up picking up 3 really nice things, best of the trogs, I didn't have any trogs on vinyl, very nice, it is in pretty good shape, it was £1.99, Hansa. I know Jason will enjoy seeing this if he's watching. Hi Jason. Jason Funny Face. That's not me calling him that, that's the name of his channel. Um, yeah, I mean the Trogs don't need much introduction, do they? Kind of classic 60s psychedelic pop rock. This one contains Wild Thing. So, uh, Reg Presley. The Trogs. Uh, this one I'd seen John showing this, I think it was this one, Six Inch Pianist, when he was doing his contest for the Memphis Gym 
soul contest i believe there was and john showed this one he made the point that it's it's kind of two to a penny you know you see a lot of them in the wild i think it was this one he said it, it was a great album i don't normally pick up diana ross Grebo graham sent me a classic one uh produced by now rogers i believe this is the only other one that i now have in lovely shape uh, and finally, uh, this was just an upgrade because the one I had already was not in the best shape. So I picked up an upgrade copy and this was actually $4.99. But it was worth it because the copy I have is fairly battered and scratched and the covers you know, not in great shape. So it was good to pick up a copy of uh, Slade by Slade. Classic uh, glam rock from the early 1970s. What's the date of this one? 1972. So yeah, quite uh, quite early. So, uh, that kind of brings me up to date to an extent. It, it doesn't really, because I've got so many records spilling out of plastic bags through there. I mean, I could be making vinyl updates for the next 20 years, if I'm really honest, but these are the ones I wanted to kind of show because I've been enjoying these and playing these and so on. So, when I come back after the summer, there'll be plenty more to show you. So, this is probably not going to be the last video you'll see from me before I go. There is one more video that I uh, want to upload, which is a kind of shout-outs video, really, saying hi to people, thanks to people, and also showing some uh, albums and CDs that have been recommended to me on the VC, uh, which I've been enjoying. So, you can expect that in the next kind of few days. So, I hope you enjoyed that uh, video, folks. Uh, take care and uh, I'll see you all very soon. Thank you to new subscribers. I'm aware I've been picking up some, some new subscribers in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and a big hello to the old subscribers as well. Thanks guys and girls. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.